Hi, it's uh, Kevin May, the Editor-in-Chief of Focuswire here at the uh, Focuswire conference. This is the Focuswire studio. Welcome, Simon Ferguson. You're now the President and Managing Director of Americas for Travelport and Amer Erica Moore, welcome back. We spoke last year, you're the VP of Sales for the Americas for Travelport. So, this is the second year that we've spoken to you uh, on the day that you've released your Global Digital Traveller Survey. The survey itself is slightly different this year. Yeah, it's we have uh, more participants. So last year was 11,000 travelers. This year is 16,000 travelers. And last year we had done 19 countries and we're up to 25 countries now. So a much broader reach. Okay, right, well well done, congratulations. Right, I'm, I'm just gonna go through some, you know, essentially some of the yeah. top line findings and you can we can see how we go with discussing those. So one of the things that came out of it was this um, use, of bi or use of biometrics or eagerness by travelers to use biometrics and um, the US in particular was kind of ranked in the middle of some of the countries so why do you think the US was perhaps not a digital leader as some might call well, it? Well actually in the biometrics piece it was 70% of the travelers it's in still the high, US. Right? Very very high so you can imagine what the others were like and I think it also you know just plays very much into the part that the US is a very mature market. It's also a uh, market that emerged along desktops versus just natural immersion into mobile. So that starts to make a, a little bit of a difference but 70% is still quite high. Okay. There's, there's yeah. also a, a biometric uh, uh, a company called Clear who, who allow you to pay in the US to get biometric clearance through security and you don't have that in too many other in too many other world markets actually so so, so I think it's fair to say the US is is still le is still leading with 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 biometrics but but probably not as much as some of the younger emerging markets and Nigeria is the interesting one uh, for biometrics so it's the first time we'd surveyed Nigeria this year uh, over 90% of travellers who responded from Nigeria would be happy to, uh, to, to, to give their data and, and use it for biometric purposes. N Nigeria also had one of the youngest sample sizes that we had. So it would be interesting if there's a correlation between use and willingness to use data off the back of the uh, you know, Facebook Cam Cambridge Analytics thing. It's right. quite interesting. There, there is that general perception that younger people yeah. Are, more are much more comfortable with trading yeah. their data in return yeah. for something else, yeah. whether yeah. that is biometrics or whether it's for perks or whatever, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And I think that probably plays into the US thing because business travelers in particular in Asia Pacific, Latin America, tend to be younger than business travelers in the US, so it probably does play a factor. Yeah, okay, so another one was voice search. Um, just generally, before we get into the, the, the results in the survey, I mean, do you think it feels as natural as perhaps people want it to be? Because, you know, I'm quite happy to use my Alexa at home and ask it for the weather and to put on a Spotify thing, but to go into a hotel and start asking for room service and things, that doesn't feel so natural. I mean, do you think we're at this kind of tipping point that we need to for voice enabled kind of search and different things to really kind of take off? Well, we were actually, um, you know, just chatting this morning about yeah. that and a little bit more than, you know, we were just saying that it, everybody's focused on Alexa and really when traveling, it's a lot more Siri type search, right? When you're asking specific questions around specific things, um, whether it's the map or the restaurant or tickets for something or some type of entertainment. So um, it's not just Alexa. No? Yeah, I think um, uh, they, it, it, voice search is getting a lot smarter. Yeah. I asked Alexa the other day, who is Kevin May? And you'd be amazed at the answer. <laughs> but uh, no, s s seriously, I think w what tends to happen is people are getting a lot more used to asking uh, voice search devices, whether they be Siri or Alexa, for, for different things. And what we see is typically consumer behavior transfers through into travel. The other interesting thing in the survey is there are disparities in the countries, massive voice search for travel penetration in China, for example, and Turkey. Now, part of the reason for that, Alexa and Google Home don't operate in China. Chinese language is quite complex. So the, the work that the likes of Alibaba and Tencent have done there is really paying off. Turkey is, is really fascinating. We're not quite sure why Turkey scored so highly in voice search, whether it's, again, whether it's a language thing or uh, uh, whereas, interestingly enough, some of the European markets have actually dropped in voice search, but overall, voice search did increase to over 50% of the travelers. I, I think in some of the European markets they dropped. Again, I, I think it is, it is early days for voice search. The ability for voice search to pick up thick Southern European accents, 
versus clipped Scandinavian accents is probably quite different. Yeah, sure. I suppose there is also that kind of the initial everybody buying an Alexa and home and yeah. being excited and using it, and then there's maybe a natural kind of tailing off as you get back to real life or something yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So another element that came up and talked to us, uh, Erica, first of all, about using social media to research and the figures are quite high. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, when, when you start to look at the, the inspirational part of travel, right, uh, a lot more is happening uh, when you do Instagram, when you share Facebook, not so much, younger generations, more Snapchat, more Instagram. And in fact, um, there's, there's something really cool and we've been dabbling with that for a bit, but um, in Europe, um, we are actually, you know, in conjunction with EasyJet, you can get an Instagram picture and uh, it will pick up you know where that place is and start suggesting travel arrangements so that you can get there so that's that's what we're seeing right it's that it's that inspirational component or um, when it's activities um, whether it be again you know on on site while traveling it's your friends start to ping you right look at this and this is cool and this is coming up and they start suggesting and artificial intelligence plays a role in that as so well. it, indeed so that they're kind of the the traveler influencer kind of movement on Instagram may actually have hold more power than perhaps us skeptics in the media would suggest. Yeah, I, 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 I really think so. I mean, uh, over 80% of travellers have a social media wish list for where they want to go, but, but only 8% of them have been to all the places on the list. So it's a great right. opportunity for travel brands to, 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 to link into that into that desire for people to share and show off, let's let's face it, um, some great apps. I, I, again, if you, if you look at the survey, some very interesting differences there. When you look at you look at China where your know, WeChat, for example, is, is kind of social media plus payments plus you know kind of everything integrated, you, you get a you get a you get again a you know a much higher flow there. It's much more integrated into the inspiration through into the into the booking process okay so uh, Erica talk to us a little bit about the results have they related to reward schemes and loyalty and stuff like that so um, absolutely what, what we've been seeing is that there is an absolute um, very strong correlation between um, the, the participating and booking and generating that, that loyalty to the brands yep. through social media right and more and more a way in which um, companies are um, starting to secure that brand awareness and that return uh, you know to the sites and to the brand uh, whether it's the airlines for example right through their branded fares um, it's by linking those types of programs and and creating more um, adoption yeah and there was something else that came up if people would would rather trade off this a good digital experience or they would rather have a good digital experience rather than get air miles well i think that's probably you know air miles aren't always the easiest to redeem is the that's issue true. Yeah. Uh, you know there are some startups that are doing some good work in making them easier to 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 redeem uh, so i think i think it's 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 partly a consequence of that but but i i think also on the rewards thing i mean it, it actually corporate travel is an example of where smart travel managers are starting to use gamification and reward to incentivize their travelers to to adhere to policy which is a really smart way of using you know digital techniques in the leisure space into the corporate travel environment. Yes. And, and you're even having a, along those lines, uh, some companies are also starting to use um, the adherence to um, to the travel programs by sharing some of the savings that come from actually being, you know, responsive to the to the travel management program. So there's a, a couple of companies out there that are actually playing in that space of allowing companies to share the rewards or the savings that come from that as well. So it's a different, it's an evolution of the reward system, if you will, and trying to tap into the preference of the traveler a different way. Okay, uh, the results of this survey are freely available so people can go and get there's, there's a lot of data there I just wanted to you know as we kind of wrap up I mean what does this all kind of mean for travel port it's great that you do this survey every year and you get a lot of data back how do you then apply it to what you're doing back at the ranch as it were uh, well it's hugely important in what we do I mean we are a, a b2b uh, b2b2c company uh, effectively so uh, 
couple of years ago, we, we bought a, a mobile development business, which we now call Travelport Digital. Uh, we use a lot of the trends that come out in a survey like this, you know, such as the Instagram example. It's, it's actually our developers at Travelport who built that functionality for the EasyJet app. So, so, so we look at this and understand that if we can create that type of uh, consumer experience uh, and allow our customers, be they OTAs or, or, or business travel customers, to offer that experience to their to their customers. It makes sense for us. So things like you know voice search, we've experimented with. Uh, it was five years ago we developed the first uh, booking interface into Facebook. Uh, chatbots are a big area for us. So growing the automation of the the post booking travel experience through allowing travellers to interface with travel brands, but it's a chatbot that's doing the heavy lifting. Those are just a couple of examples of where we take this data and, and actually apply it into our own product development process. Okay. And, and, and Erica, I mean, you focus specifically on, uh, on the Americas. I mean, do you think the customers that you talk to, you know, they might think, oh, this is, a, this is a terrific survey and it's all very interesting, but do you sense that they would, they're kind of, kind of tuned into all this and what is the opportunity yeah. for them? So, so actually, it's, um, it's, it's the, our, even our customer base is a great, great reflection of the trends that you start to see. The U.S. ranked in um, as number 15 in terms of digital adoption in, in the survey, right? And when we look at our experience, even with our own customer base, that's exactly what we see, right? We see the top, um, sort of the top tier of customers, whether they be corporate or leisure, very much investing in disruption, in um, digital tools, in creating that customer engagement piece and that customer Inter interaction that is 100% mobile. Um, and then we have a, a broader, mature base that is a little bit more traditional, um, but still going into smartphones, going into digital, but a little bit more cautiously, not sort of embracing everything and disrupting right. the, whole, um, the whole ecosystem. Okay, and we'll finish with you, Simon. So, um, we talked last year, we're talking this year. What do you think would be a a, a, a big digital trend that we would be talking about next year? Uh, I think voice search is is going to continue to be more and more uh, endemic. Um, I think also something that came out of the survey, I think, I think we know that mobile is where it's at, but there's a big opportunity to, uh, to, to, to create an experience where multiple apps come together in, in one mobile experience. There's a number of companies ourselves who are working on that. I mean, we, we did, a, we did a, a prototype with Microsoft recently whereby you can, if you, if you uh, are, are liaising with a colleague and you arrange a meeting in Outlook, uh, a chatbot in the background will look for those flights and the hotels for you. So I think the integration of multiple mobile digital technologies into one booking flow is something that we will see happening more and more. You may well see the number of apps that people People use uh, per traveller decrease as a result of that because the experience is getting better. Yeah, I mean, the, something that we've talked about is there's one app to one app to rule them all kind of thing, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? You know, at some point people aren't going to want to use multiple yeah, apps. Yeah. Did he disappear after he used it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and, uh, That's another story entirely. So, uh, Eric Moore, Simon Ferguson, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.